In sports, players usually control the ball by throwing it, catching it, or kicking it. But there are two special situations when a player's goal is to simply get hit by the ball, when standing in a soccer wall facing a free kick, and when blocking a punt or a field goal in football. So what's more painful, getting blasted by a soccer ball to prevent a goal, or diving into a football at point-blank range? In order to find out which kicker can bring more pain, football or soccer, we're going to measure pain the sport science way by measuring force. And to find out what kind of damage soccer's free kick does, we brought in Major League striker Edson Buttle. In 2008, playing on the LA Galaxy alongside David Beckham, Buttle established himself as one of the league's top scoring threats, scoring hat tricks in two games. My objective is to score goals and, you know, hit the ball as hard as I can. Standing in the wall 10 yards from a free kick spot is like facing a firing squad, except that you actually want to get hit. The defender's objective is to help the keeper protect the goal while protecting their family jewels. Normally, four or five players stand in the wall, but to hone in on the force felt by a single player, we're going to use a one-man wall. Stepping up to act as our human target is sports science lab rat, John Brinkus. John's used to taking this kind of punishment. He's been bit by a dog, launched by a lineman, choked out, and nailed in the nets. And now, our fearless lab rat will find out how much force is generated when you get smashed by a soccer ball from point blank range. <laughs> I'm a one man wall. He looks like he wants to get hit, so I give him what he wants. Edson gets wired up with a micro strain wireless accelerometer, which will measure the force of the blast and its impact. How do you just stand here? What's the proper way to stand in the wall? Well, first you want to cover here, and then you want to cover up here. Cover like this? But make this sure you make your... sure you don't cover your eyes. Just cover your face a little bit to prepare yourself to put it up here. So you're promising me that it's not going to hit the side of my face? Well, I can't promise you. All right. <laughs> don't we have a crash test dummy for this kind of thing? Crash test dummy? Not ringing any bells. <laughs> All right, ready? <laughs> what? <laughs> that is insane. I don't think you want to run out the way of the ball. If you run from the ball, your goal is going to be pissed off, and then you're going to be down one nothing. You want to square up and face the ball. All right. But if I'm squaring up, it's going to hit me in the face or That's something. That's what you want. That's exactly what you want. That kick was traveling over 70 miles an hour. <laughs> but since this test isn't about flinching, but about getting smashed, it's time to give it one more try. Take a second, don't move. How powerful was Edson's kick? Data from the accelerometer reveals that the 16 ounce ball left Edson's foot traveling at 72 miles per hour. 
wind resistance slows it by nearly 20 miles an hour before impact. But it still smacks John upside the head, literally knocking him backwards with 158 pounds of force. Oh. Oh. Honestly, I feel like my ear is dangling from my head. It goes away. It's just a quick sting. It goes away eventually. Eventually, you just shake it off and... So how does that impact compare with a point-blank blast from a football? To find out, we'll utilize the powerful leg of former USC All-American and current NFL punter, Tom Malone. Today, he'll be putting his boot to work against professional stuntman, Chris Brewster. Your instructions are to kick the ball as hard as you possibly can. Absolutely. Now, Chris, you have to literally throw yourself into harm's way. You're going to be laying out, just trying to block that kick. To find out how much damage a pun can do, we wire up Chris's hands with one-of-a-kind tech scan gloves. These gloves have thousands of sensiles to measure the precise force of Tom's kick. Ready, guys, here we go. Three, two, one, go. So how did that impact compare with the force felt by a soccer player blocking a free kick? Our sensors reveal that Tom's foot generates 200 pounds of force, blasting the football into Chris's hand at 55 miles per hour. That's exactly the same speed as the soccer ball that drilled John. But amazingly, the football impacts Chris with only 16 pounds of force. That's only 10% of the 158 pounds of force that John felt when he got smacked in the head. Oh, oh. Why does Chris experience so little force? It's because his hands and arms flex and give like shock absorbers. Only two inches of recoil reduces the force of the impact by 80%. Oh. While there's potential for fracturing a finger trying to block punts, getting blasted in the head by a soccer ball going over 70 miles an hour impacts the head with enough force to actually bruise the brain and cause a major concussion. Of course, lucky for John, most of the force is absorbed by his freakishly floppy ear which deforms to one-fourth its normal size. Oh, oh. Even though taking a soccer ball to the ear hole is potentially more dangerous than blocking a punt, no. No. if a kamikaze defender doesn't time the block right, he can get kicked right in the stomach. So how much force is generated by a boot to the gut? The only way to find out is by blasting our stuntman right in the breadbasket. That rocket generated an amazing six times more force than the soccer ball to John's head. You all right? Good. You all right? Yeah. I felt that one. I'm, uh, I'm glad I'm not a football. Oh. 